October is Small Business Month, and we have partnered with TD to profile LGBT plus owned businesses all across Canada that have been successful in managing to navigate the COVID-19 pandemic. We will be discussing how they managed, some of the challenges that they faced, and how their financial institution helped them to weather the COVID-19 storm. For our second interview, we have with us today Robert Sharp, owner of Out Adventures, a premier LGBT plus uh, small group a travel agency. Robert, great to have you today. Thank you for having me. Very nice to see you. So Robert, just to get us started, Out Adventures has been planning a small group escapes for our community since 2009. Tell us how you got started with this business and what motivated you to start your own travel company. Um, well, I had a, a deep passion for traveling. Uh, and exploring new cultures. And at the time, my partner in business and life uh, and I were burnt out with our respective careers and kind of thought, well, there's uh, a bit of a gap in the marketplace as it related to uh, gay tours and, and LGBT tours that really focused on a more meaningful experience and not just uh, a party, not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, and so we uh, sold our house and packed up our stuff and sent away our dog and decided to go traveling uh, for nine months. And we hashed out this plan for out adventures. And despite uh, the relationship not lasting uh, in the in the context that it once was, we're still good friends. And here we are, twelve years. Uh, 11 years later, running this amazing little company that um, has traveled all seven continents and, and with thousands of clients, and we're so excited to be here. That's great, Robert. And of course, the issues that LGBT plus travelers face uh, are different from other travelers. Tell us what it's like to go on a trip with uh, Out Adventures and what sets Out Adventures apart from other similar travel services. Sure. I mean, the I would say the big difference between LGBT travelers and, and normal travelers, I mean, we're providing a similar experience, but it comes down to camaraderie. Um, on an LGBT tour, we don't have to come out multiple times per day. Um, and uh, our guests can really just sit back and know that we've taken care of the details. We've uh, sourced accommodations and guides and suppliers that are welcoming to us as human beings. And that's so important when you're traveling to destinations that we visit, uh, often many of which are not uh, traditionally welcoming. And so to be able to provide that safe environment for people just to be who they are uh, and to enjoy their vacation and not have to worry about all those little things like will the hotel honor my reservation with one bed for my husband and I um, and little things like that and uh, we've been so lucky over the years to build a uh, huge network of suppliers guides hotels that are welcoming to us um, and I would say that's the the biggest difference uh, when looking at, you know, normal tours versus LGBT tours. And then when comparing out adventures to other LGBT tour companies, um, I would say that we pride ourselves above all else on providing a truly meaningful experience. So engaging with the local LGBT plus communities in the, in the destinations we're visiting, uh, supporting them where possible, uh, through interaction with NGOs and not-for-profits and uh, activists and advocates in a fun way that doesn't take away from a vacation, um, but also uh, ends up putting money back in the pockets of our community in those places around the world. From closed borders to consumer uh, uncertainty when it comes to travel, it's really safe to say that travel uh, is one of the main industries that has been hit hardest by the pandemic. So I'm very curious to know if you can tell us a bit about how your business has been impacted by the effects of COVID-19. <laughs> it has the famous been, question. Uh, yeah, uh, it has been affected in every possible way. Um, we, uh, 2020 was set to be our biggest year ever. 
Uh, we were on track to have our best year profitability uh, ever. And it was just, you know, torn out from under our feet. And uh, we canceled tours. And at this point, uh, we canceled every tour on our roster from uh, March 15th at this point through to the end of December 2020. And to be quite honest, we are not expecting to operate a tour most likely until spring or later. Um, there's so many factors, but for us, safety is the most important thing. Uh, we will not operate a trip if it's not safe to do so. And right now, there are just too many factors, too many risks involved. Um, and I mean, we have a, a, a solid reputation for putting safety first, and we wouldn't want to jeopardize that. Um, Obviously, with that, uh, our lights are still on, as you see, uh, and so we have uh, adapted and, and we're working on exciting things to keep us going in the future, and we're lucky that we've had a few good years behind us that we're able to weather the storm and, um, and the immense support from our government puts us in a unique position when compared to uh, other operators south of the border. So we're very thankful in this moment to be Canadian. And just focusing in a bit, Robert, on, um, on adapting your business. You know, we've seen lots of businesses in the travel industry having to adapt to this changing situation. Um, you know, many now are encouraging uh, more domestic travel or, or staycation programs, if you will. Um, I'm wondering if you can maybe just tell us a bit about how, um, how you've had to adapt to your business and perhaps you know, you've come up with some new or unique tactics that have been able to um, in it, like enable you to pivot your services and your business? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at the beginning, we really struggled. Should we, you know, pivot and provide domestic services, um, both in Canada and the United States, understanding that, you know, 75% of our clients are American south of the border. Um, which would make domestic product a little bit complicated considering we are up here north of the border. Um, and so we made a decision very early on that we just don't, uh, at that point in time, didn't feel we could deliver the real value that we deliver uh, when traveling abroad and domestic product. And so we decided instead to focus 100% on negotiating our contracts with suppliers for future trips, um, ensuring for the trips we've had to cancel that we could min minimize any unrecoverable fees for our, our clients or as many as we could anyways, um, and to secure trips well into the future because I mean, everything from 2020 is being moved to 2021, which leaves very little availability for 2021, which means, you know, as things ramp up, there will be a huge amount of demand, not a lot of supply as things are, you know, rolled over into future years. Um, and on top of that, we don't know what the, what the world will look like, how many small business hotels and tour operators will not be able to weather this storm, leaving even less supply for this, you know, potential increased demand we shall see. Um, and so our focus was really to lock things in as far ahead as possible so that we have uh, tours and trips and uh, exciting things for our clients to dream about in the future. Robert, you're a, a seasoned operator in the tourism industry. I'm very curious to know, you know, how do you think we can restart this sector of the economy? And I think more importantly, what do you think might be some of the more permanent uh, lasting effects uh, that this year might have on, on the tourism and travel sector uh, and on the future travel moving forward? Sure. I mean, number one, I don't think it is uh, so simple as to say we can restart this sector. Um, I do think domestic comes back first. Uh, funny, considering I've openly stated that I made the decision to focus on international, um, but we are focusing on the long term. And I think in the short term, um, domestic is, is going to ramp up first. And that's where a lot of domestic operators, businesses have to pivot to focus to a, on a market that doesn't necessarily spend as much domestically as international tourists do. Um, and so I think that 
outside of domestic, it's going to uh, travel in general will come back slowly. It will open as consumers gain confidence um, as travel restrictions are lifted, not only um, internationally, but the, the alerts and the, um, the warnings from our own government, which prohibit us from obtaining proper travel insurance in many cases, not all. Um, and then outside of that, what is, what is happening with COVID-19? When will there be a uh, vaccine or, or reliable treatment? It looks like it's on the horizon, but we really don't know. And I think that uh, it will be a slow recovery. We, we can't force it as much as you know, airlines and, and the big tour operators are, are really lobbying and trying to have things opened up. Um, you still need consumer confidence and that's going to take time. Very interesting. Um, Robert, curious as well to know, uh, how has your uh, financial institution helped you to weather the storm when it comes to managing the effects of uh, COVID-19 on the Canadian economy? Uh, well, I mean, I speak for uh, my relationship with TD, and uh, they were very quick from, from the beginning in rolling out the uh, Canadian emergency business account, uh, uh, which my business took part in uh, to, you know, take a very small portion of that burden off of our shoulders. Um, and TD itself has been incredibly uh, supportive through this process on a personal level through the uh, their LGBT business development team, uh, always reaching out asking, you know, if we as a business need anything, uh, how we're doing and, and uh, specific questions uh, surrounding finances and whatnot. And I mean, that is something I have, I have never experienced um, on a, a small business level. Uh, and I'm just so thankful that TD has that LGBT team that really takes care of us uh, as small business owners. Lastly, Robert, I'm, I'm curious to know, you know, you have you've, you've sound like you've managed to successfully navigate this crisis so far. So, you know, for other small uh, business owners who, who are LGBT who might be uh, watching this today, curious to know if you have any advice for them on how to, how to survive and how to manage the effects of COVID-19. <laughs> If we, if we had a, a magic clue, I would love to take it. Uh, but I mean, from my perspective, I have almost burnt out multiple times in these past six months. And I think it always comes back to taking care of ourselves as business owners. If we can't take care of ourselves, it's very hard to take care of our staff and of our clients. And I think the uh, the most important thing I've taken away from this is uh, not to be afraid to ask for help, whether it's from the bank, whether it's from friends and families and those we respect, whether it's in our industries or otherwise. It's, this is a time that uh, is unlike anything any of us have ever experienced. And the more we can lean on each other, I think the more likely we are to come out the other side successful um, and uh, it's just so important to take care of ourselves. We're no use to anyone when we're burnt out. So that would be my number one piece of advice. Robert, I think that's really timely and really, really great advice. Well, look, Robert, it was uh, an absolute pleasure speaking to you here today. On behalf of CGLCC, Canada's LGBT Plus Chamber of Commerce and TD, uh, we would like to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to share some of your experiences that will hopefully help inspire fellow LGBT plus business owners across Canada during this period of a pandemic. So thank you very much, Robert, for your time. We really appreciate it. Dale, thank you. And thank you, CGLCC and TD. Now more than ever, Canadian small business owners are counting on their resilience and their optimism to help them weather the COVID-19 storm. We encourage you to visit cglcc.ca where we will be sharing more actionable advice from real LGBT plus business owners to help you navigate the new normal. <laughs>